Good morning, hi all. Welcome to this uh, third day devoted to artistic research. And uh, this is um, uh, the last session of uh, these online one, uh, one. So it's a, it's a session that uh, ends uh, uh, part of the, um, pro uh, of the three days and opens um, the um, long day that will go into the night, which is devoted to the European Researchers' Night. So it's a quite a, a significant day for our academy, and uh, we are very happy to have a very strong series of participants, either this morning, both this morning and this afternoon, where uh, we'll host a series of events in our academy. Um, first of all, this morning, we'll end the series of uh, talks and uh, uh, presentations, um, and the topic of uh, this morning will be uh, a dialogue between artistic research and artistic practice and other kinds of practices and research. research. Um, there are, of course, a very possible definition, but just start from a very simple one, um, which is basically the drive for new knowledge, which is a um, typical and, I think, um, um, essential human quality. Uh, so uh, the, this drive towards new knowledge, this drive to, uh, towards uh, making new association is what, at the, at the end of the day, makes us human. Also because it's a, it's a practice that needs a community. No? You cannot research on your own. Uh, the research needs a community, a group, um, and needs uh, what it's, uh, we can call in other uh, words an ecosystem in which uh, different kinds of research. So you need a community, and the more diverse this community is, uh, the more new connection can establish. And this was a, a central point for fostering our research ecosystem, this dialogue with other methods, other methodologies, other kind of research. So I'm very happy that today we can witness uh, the progress of these uh, um, efforts uh, in, the, um, in the field of the dialogue between arts and science and arts and technology. Basically, there are two main focus now of the day. Um, so, uh, of course, uh, very briefly, uh, when you um, uh, have a dialogue with someone who does maybe the same thing that you do, but in another context, the first thing that you, ha that you have to do is to agree on words, agree on practices. So one of the words that uh, will um, uh, recur in the morning will be, the, uh, of course, the word lab, laboratory, as a place for research. Um, so we will, um, we will uh, call our colleagues from uh, Hufa Budapest will um, uh, tell us how they uh, have organized their lab and uh, uh, we'll have um, an assessment of uh, the lab that uh, the uh, Academia di Belle Arti Roma, Fine Arts Academy in Rome, has established with the, nuclear, uh, the National Institute of Nuclear Physics um, because uh, also I think both I mean, one of the key points when you speak about research is an idea of assessment, not only uh, of the, uh, not necessarily of the output, so not necessarily judging the quality of the output, but ju judging and assessing the processes of, of research. And this is uh, what we've done with our um, lab, with uh, colleagues of the National Institute of Nuclear Physics that we have called CARE Lab. So we will uh, uh, have a, a first assessment of uh, what we've done, carried out by one of the leading uh, quality assessment uh, agency uh, called EQ, EQ Arts. So this was another, another team of the day, and uh, I'm going backwards at the shrimps. No? So I'm <laughs> now uh, getting to uh, um, Professor Capucci. Um, there, there, there will be a dialogue with uh, technology, with new technologies. Of course, we all have the feeling that uh, we are witnessing a paradigmatic change. There's a moment in which uh, this emerging technology, which is a, not one, as we all know, but it's a series of technology. So there is a kind of collective name no, that goes under the uh, this tag, uh, artificial intelligence, is changing the, uh, the more deeply uh, the, our world. So uh, today we'll have two takes on, on this uh, uh, 
central uh, development, um, both from the, let's say, technological uh, point of view, the uh, quality management point of view. Ah, non mi sentite? Ah, non mi sentono loro. Knowledge management point of view and uh, um, from the point of view uh, uh, that comes stems from the artistic practice. No? Uh, so that was all. Sorry uh, about the, the, channel, the overall introduction of the day. The day will then continue in the afternoon, not on Teams, but you have to come to our um, uh, place in Largodino Frisullo, which you, you won't be able to find because it's basically, <laughs> once you're there, just give us a call, we come to rescue and we will uh, say where our place is. Um, so, uh, I'm very happy, first of all, to start today, um, leaving the floor to the Professor Pierluigi Capucci, wh whom I'm introducing a uh, uh, sh uh, shortly, but uh, the first thing that I want to say is that uh, um, the um, presentation by uh, Professor Capucci is part of the wider course that has been organized uh, in the framework of uh, U4Art differences. So this is the first uh, um, um, event uh, and then a small group of 25 uh, students coming from uh, five different uh, universities across Europe will follow then uh, uh, a path uh, together with, uh, uh, led by uh, Professor Capucci. So we are also testing a little format, no? uh, a small course format, and this is one of our first uh, um, tests in this, uh, in this um, direction. So it's not only the presentation, it's a start of a thing that will then develop in the next, next few months. So. This was all. Now let's um, uh, present uh, uh, Professor Capucci, which we are really honored and pleased to have as a guest today. And um, is a scholar in arts, science, and technology, cultural relations, and media studies. And Professor Capucci is also a consultant of the European Commission on these topics. And he, had, he lectured in institutions and published more than 400 texts worldwide. He has been the director of studies of the Planetary Colleg Collegium M-Node PhD program of the University of Plymouth and professor in many institutions. He's the founder and president of NOEMA, a journal and network on culture, art, science, and technology, and the founder and curator of the research project Art Science, the Art, Science, art and Climate Change. Sorry, you say what? He is member of AI, AICA, Association Internationale de Critique d'Art Paris, Paris, and in the scientific committees of the Italian branch. Professor Capucci, <laughs> the floor is yours. I leave you on the stage and I just... Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation and thank you so much uh, both for being here in presence and also online uh, uh, through Teams. So uh, my, my task is very difficult because uh, I have to try to be interesting for many categories of people that are students and that are researchers and that are uh, general people that uh, maybe have only a, a curiosity in, uh, on this topic. And as uh, uh, Franco Ripa di Meana has said, this is the first of four lessons. Um, and um, um, I decided to um, get into some uh, important questions, uh, important issues regarding uh, artificial intelligence, the arts. Uh, my uh, background, my um, study background is in the humanistic field. I am not a technologist and I am not a scientist. Uh, I have uh, been working in uh, the fields of the arts and of communication. But I think that, uh, especially today, it's very important to put together fields that are apparently so distant. So let's start with the first, uh, yes. The course is this. And, um, um, our students has, have received uh, have received uh, a document uh, with uh, some uh, uh, technical uh, information um, that uh, um, concern uh, um, in part the content and in part uh, 
uh, I, I would like that uh, in the end of the course uh, there could be uh, a production uh, using uh, 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 generative artificial intelligence tools and um, the idea is to organize the publication or a catalog or a, even an exhibition if, uh, if uh, it will be possible. And uh, uh, students are from many, uh, from many fields, uh, cinema, design, uh, fashion design, uh, multimedia. And so it, uh, I think it could be very interesting to see uh, how they, they take these uh, tools and, and uh, create uh, um, their works. Um, well, um, in uh, the main, uh, the main, uh, the main. Uh, um, well, if if you have to 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 uh, uh, teach uh, uh, a course like this, you have uh, at least four big areas of uh, of uh, interest that you have to put together, and these areas are uh, uh, dealing with technology. I have indicated in the in the picture that you that is in the left. Uh, because uh, uh, you have to talk about the tools, uh, artificial intelligence, algorithms, robotics, artificial lives that are all connected. Uh, and and uh, you have uh, the realm of art. Uh, and uh, um, of course, uh, um, some of the uh, topics and some of the tools, uh, issues are not news in the art field, but uh, uh, there are some uh, common ideas that have emerged in the past and uh, um, we have to, to take them in consideration. Uh, for instance, uh, the relationship uh, uh, among art and science, uh, the, the researches in generative art and algorithmic art that are researches that are going on since uh, the end of the uh, 20th centuries, uh, the first uh, the first time that generative art, that the word, the, the word generative art has been used is in 1998. So um, the risk is uh, not to consider totally new what instead uh, as a history. Um, uh, algorithmic art, robotic art, robotic is uh, a, a, a derivation, a derivative of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and there are uh, many, many uh, many intersections and also and also uh, 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 artificial life. Artificial life uh, is uh, um, a, a, a discipline very interesting that uh, tries to to uh, simulate uh, life, uh, uh, simulate biological life inside computers, and uh, and uh, uh, to, and to experiment with biological life, but uh, with a simulation that. Uh, does not touch the biological world. And the first uh, conference uh, about this uh, uh, was uh, in, uh, if I remember, uh, 1986 or 87, and uh, um, uh, Christopher Langton was uh, the person who, who uh, first uh, uh, worked on this topic, and the proceeding of this conference are the first, uh, the first uh, a book, uh, the first uh, document, official document of that. And then there is uh, the area of theory, because when we talk about the relationship uh, um, about artificial intelligence and art, uh, you have to talk about theories, and uh, there are many, many, many topics. Uh, for instance, uh, one main uh, discourse is simulation, because uh, because uh, generative artificial intelligence simulates, uh, simulates uh, uh, the world, simulates uh, the living, simulates uh, our worlds, uh, and uh, the same is for robotics, and the same is for uh, uh, artificial life. So simulation is a key word and a key topic uh, in uh, these studies. Uh, art and simulation have uh, a, a very long uh, history, and so uh, we, we will, we will uh, get a connection among these uh, words. Uh, one more uh, topic that I will uh, be talking uh, today is uh, the uh, fact that uh, um, generative AI images uh, can be mistaken for, uh, for, for photographs, for pictures. 
And uh, so, uh, and this is uh, a, 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 a very important issue since, uh, since uh, uh, in, in many ways they are indistinguishable from uh, photographs. But uh, uh, maybe we see that uh, uh, there is a process that we can take in consideration to, to avoid uh, all the fake uh, words and all the, all the, all the uh, um, uh, engaging uh, <coughs> topics uh, that uh, concern uh, uh, this kind of simulation. Then there are the issues about art, the ethical issues that are very important today, uh, the copyright issues, and uh, the, um, the end, what I call the third life, that is, uh, um, I think that humanity is uh, building uh, um, through science and technologies, uh, uh, is building uh, um, entities that are, um, that behave more and more similar to, to the living beings and creating some sort of a third life. Uh, and in the end, uh, the, 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 fourth, uh, the fourth area is uh, the uh, practical area. Uh, I would love if uh, in the end of the course uh, our students can, uh, can create, uh, can create uh, examples uh, through uh, uh, generative AI. And I have, uh, I have given them uh, uh, the chance to, to use uh, some uh, applications. I don't know if today I uh, will be able, uh, I will have the time to, to, uh, to show which application. Um, are, these applications are mainly three, and uh, they are uh, stable diffusion. Stable diffusion is uh, a generative AI that is open source and free. And uh, the second one is Mid Journey, and the third one is Dal E. Uh, I have indicated in this document. Uh, uh, well, to uh, get uh, this, uh, this software, how to use this software, and uh, uh, some recommendations that, uh, that are important. Uh, we, um, they are very different. For instance, Midjourney is, a, 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 is a, you have to pay to use Midjourney, while Stable Diffusion is uh, both uh, free and you can install it into your PC, or if you use it online, uh, there is a release that is free and a release that is credit-based. Uh, Dolly is credit-based, so uh, beyond a certain number of pictures, you have to pay uh, something. And of course, uh, the course will not be divided uh, so dramatically in four, in four areas, but uh, we will try to put these areas together. So, um, we, we try to connect in a transdisciplinary way uh, topics and aspects belonging to different fields. So, uh, in each uh, meeting, in each uh, lesson, we will put together uh, technological issues, uh, artistic issues, and, uh, and uh, theoretical issues. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a trying to, to, to build a discourse that is running. Uh, so, um, uh, general subjects are historical, technical, scientific evolution of artificial intelligence and the subsidiaries, uh, and uh, um, the recurring element from history of art and new perspective are a very important uh, topic that we'll, uh, we uh, will be dealing with as a theoretical aspect and the practical, the practical, uh, um, the practical um, time and, uh, and out uh, uh, realizations. A very, a very short, uh, a very short, uh, a very short, uh, a few words about the text. I also selected a short list of text that uh, our student can uh, can, uh, can read, they are all uh, free uh, to, uh, to, to download, and I will say just a few words about them. The first one is uh, a text that was commissioned by the European Commission about, uh, uh, about artificial intelligence, humanities and artificial intelligence, uh, humanities and artificial intelligence. The capital T is not a mistake, 
but uh, in the title it should, uh, it should uh, underline that uh, humanities, uh, human societies are uh, uh, full of uh, ties among people in uh, uh, cultural uh, ways, uh, social ways, economical ways. So uh, uh, this uh, uh, capital T uh, in indicates that the, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, society uh, in, in society uh, has to uh, deal with also with uh, very important topics, human topics. This uh, text uh, was uh, curated by, by uh, Freddy Paul Grunert, who is uh, a, an artist and uh, a, a, a consultant at, uh, in, uh, of the European Commission and uh, of the European Parliament on this topic. And uh, I have been in this uh, project uh, for uh, three reasons, three, three tasks, because uh, of this project I am the publisher. Uh, we have published uh, this uh, through Noema. I am a reviewer in the group of reviewers, and also there is a text of mine inside. The second test is uh, um, the um, proceeding of a workshop that has been uh, conducted at Sineca. Sineca is uh, uh, the second European calculation center in power, and it is in Bologna. Um, and uh, and um, uh, just now is they are organizing some workshop about uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and uh, cultural heritage and also art. And I participated to the last meeting that uh, also that it was in, during the, the night of his researchers. So the night of the researchers is very, it's a very long night, it seems, uh, just uh, one week ago. Uh, the, the other text uh, is an article about uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, um, generative artificial intelligence and video, because uh, some of your students uh, work in this field. Uh, the um, two texts, the other two texts are from Lev Manovic. Manovic is uh, um, a key figure in uh, the uh, technological uh, field uh, and the humanities in the world. Uh, he has published uh, uh, some uh, very interesting essays and studies. Um, and uh, so I, I selected these uh, two texts, uh, two articles uh, that can be useful for, 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 uh, for us. And at the end is a text of mine that uh, it is uh, just uh, only in Italian and French. It was published uh, in a French magazine uh, that uh, is uh, about uh, the perspective of art, how art of the future will be. Uh, and of course, there is also a part uh, on uh, generative art, uh, generative artificial intelligence and the arts. Uh, about the, the topic that... Uh, that um, Franco uh, said before uh, the relationship among art and science. I want to, to uh, spend a few words uh, on some projects that are very important inter internationally, um, and uh, in, particular, in particular Europe is very interested in these relationships and, uh, and uh, is uh, uh, there is a lot of money on these uh, projects because uh, um, they think uh, that uh, uh, a connection uh, between art and science uh, can be very useful uh, both from the scientific research but also for the artistic research and from many viewpoints. So we have uh, the Star Prize. The Star Prize is uh, an European prize uh, that uh, um, connects art and science and, and allows artists from all over the world to get in touch with the scientists and to uh, uh, create works in cooperation and these works are produced by the European community. Uh, for each project there are uh, uh, 40,000 euros for each of these projects and then they are exhibited uh, in many European nations. 
I have been in the jury of uh, the 2021 uh, Star Prize uh, that uh, uh, in Italy was hosted uh, uh, by the Maxi Museum in Rome, uh, as the residence was in the Maxi Museum in Rome, and I have been in the jury of the 2023 Start Project that uh, has a resident at Cineca in Bologna. Cineca is the second calculation center in and of course, this, uh, the projects that have been selected, that we have selected on uh, f uh, almost 60, so there were many that have been presented, uh, that have been presented, and, uh, uh, and are, of course, uh, tied to the ability of Cineca to deal with large quantities of data, big data, and, uh, of course, uh, calculations uh, uh, in creating... Uh, uh, models of, of, of uh, nature or world situation of, uh, of, uh, of the world. Uh, more projects are the FIT project. Uh, um, the in, uh, at CERN, and, uh, there is a, a program that is art at CERN. Um, in, in the end uh, of the page, you see, of uh, the slide, you see Leonardo. Leonardo is the most important uh, magazine in the world. Uh, it is published by MIT Press about uh, the relationship among, among art, sciences, and technologies. Uh, and um, there is a, the, um, the Archi Salon is a, a project that is inside the uh, Fields Institute uh, in, for Research in Mathematical Sciences, that is uh, one of the most important uh, um, institutes for mathematics in, in the world. And every year it uh, gives the Fields Medal. The Fields Medal is uh, some kind of a Nobel for the mathematicians. And I have been honored to, in 2018, to present my, to, to be invited to present my research there. And in the end, there is a, a Shaintar Society uh, uh, inside uh, a, uh, one research center in Europe. Maybe you know, I think that uh, researchers know that uh, in Europe there are uh, six uh, research centers, JRC joint research centers, in, uh, in, uh, in six different nations. And the task of this, uh, uh, this uh, center is to generate research for policy. Uh, why? Uh, when the uh, European Commission has to deliver uh, or to make laws, uh, needs uh, uh, a knowledge, scientific knowledge. And this knowledge can't be based on uh, uh, co companies, commercial companies, because commercial companies, as, as we know, have interests, particular interests. So uh, these six centers that have uh, some thousand of, of scientists that are working there and, and that are maintained by the European Commission make research on many different tasks and uh, this research gets to, uh, is very helpful helpful in, uh, in taking decision at the European level for the law and for all the, the, the uh, ideas that uh, come from them. And uh, inside the ISPRA center, one of the centers is in Italy, it is on the Lago, Lago Maggiore, it is based on Lago Maggiore, and it is the third uh, bigger in, in Europe, and in this center it was born the project Arshine Society that is devoted to putting in connection art and science. And uh, uh, as Noema, we are, uh, we are a partner of this project. Um, as Noema, we are a partner of the project. Maybe um, Franco has, um, has spent a few words about this, uh, this uh, project that is uh, substantially a magazine that uh, 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 has been, uh, has bo was born in uh, 2000, and uh, uh, it has always uh, worked in uh, this uh, um, connection between uh, arts, uh, uh, science, uh, technology, and culture. Um, and uh, uh, we were honored by the uh, commission, by the European, uh, by Europe, of uh, publishing this book, that uh, it is a book I was talking before, 
um, and that uh, we publish it uh, under Gold Open Access, so you can download it freely in the link that, uh, that is indicated. As to, to um, putting together disciplines that are uh, that belong to different fields uh, and to uh, put art inside, so this is a link uh, where you can download it from. I, I will give these uh, uh, slides to our students, of course. Uh, so, um, putting together arts uh, inside, uh, the, uh, inside sciences and technology is very important, and uh, in, uh, in the United States, uh, some years ago, started, uh, uh, some, some decades ago, started a project that uh, is, name, uh, is named uh, um, uh, From STEM to STEAM, from STEM to STEAM. STEM education is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And uh, in some uh, uh, universities before, but then also in, uh, in uh, uh, younger classes, uh, from the first classes, uh, they have in, uh, in inserted uh, art. So uh, from science to STEAM, STEAM means uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And um, this uh, idea was uh, uh, kept also from the European uh, Commission and, and also uh, uh, and, uh, there is uh, a policy to integrate this, uh, this uh, teaching, they, they, they are teaching inside uh, the so-called hard uh, disciplines and uh, you can see some of the books that have been published uh, on that. Uh, one, more, uh, one more issue one more uh, um, topic that uh, is important in this field is, uh, um, is uh, the uh, is this one um, um, when you have to put together and to in, in, in teaching but also in working as an artist uh, uh, different disciplines. Uh, uh, there are many ways uh, to put together these disciplines. Uh, and we uh, are indicated three ways uh, that uh, are uh, often used uh, um, in substitution the one of the other in, in, in a similar way. Multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. Uh, well, uh, they are indeed different meanings. And uh, um, in, in the humanities, uh, uh, Jean Piaget uh, introduced the term transdisciplinary uh, in, uh, in 1970. Uh, but uh, the, the, a, a clear definition of these uh, three words is from a, a scientific test that you see that was published in 2006. Uh, what is the difference of these three words that are used uh, um, always uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, exchanging the, the, the meanings. Multidisciplinary means that the disciplines work uh, together, but they do not, uh, do not intersect. Uh, each of one remains uh, itself. Uh, and the, the food example is a salad. In a salad, each uh, element is separated from the other. Interdisciplinary means that the disciplines have some uh, intersection point uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the example is a melting pot. In the melting pot uh, each uh, element uh, gets some of the, of the other elements but uh, substantially remains the same. The transdisciplinary is, uh, is uh, in the end is uh, 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 when uh, all disciplines fused, uh, melt, and the, the uh, food example is a cake. In a cake, each uh, element is totally intertwined, mixed to the others. Uh, of course, it is very difficult, uh, the last approach, because uh, every discipline has uh, uh, words, has ideas, has uh, uh, histories that is totally different. And so uh, working together in this way is uh, a, very difficult, uh, a very difficult issue. Getting to our topic, uh, um, I, I put uh, in this, uh, in this uh, slide uh, artificial intelligence and the possible definition of McCarthy. 
and uh, and uh, other uh, very very uh, related uh, uh, disciplines like robotics and, and artificial lives that I talked before. Uh, I would not read that because uh, because uh, maybe you know it uh, them and uh, and I will uh, give you the slide. What it is important to note. Uh, is the dimension of simulation, and I have put in, in, in bold and in red the word that concern simulation, for instance, artificial intelligence simulate uh, uh, every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. Of course, this is, uh, uh, it is a very early definition, and now there are more, much more much more, uh, gran there is a big granularity after. Robotics, uh, uh, robots creatures who can be mistaken from, uh, uh, for humans. So uh, the idea of simulation. And uh, in artificial life, uh, uh, A-Life studies natural life by attempting to recreate uh, biological phenomena. And uh, we attempt to put together systems that behave like uh, so simulation is very strong uh, uh, here too, and uh, and uh, uh, in uh, uh, here I have taken a, 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 an interesting for me sentence of Louis Beck. Louis Beck has been a French uh, uh, scholar, and he has been for many years in the scientific committee of uh, Noema. Uh, here we see him with uh, Willem Flusser. They were uh, very strict friends. And uh, uh, with this sentence, he explained very well what I am saying, and I will uh, try to, to uh, translate it from, it from French. After the advent of uh, cognitive scientists, of uh, uh, computer science, uh, of uh, artificial intelligence, of robotics, uh, and of interactivity, it is possible to simulate and to model uh, the behaviors uh, more and more complex uh, while they are running. And uh, this idea of simulation is uh, one uh, very powerful, a very interesting idea that can be uh, expanded also to the world of art. All the artwork can be, can be considered from this viewpoint and in some way as always simulated reality and the living. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, there are uh, three kinds of simulations, three kinds of simulation. The first one uh, that I have called in this way, the first one is a diegetic simulator. Diegetic simulation is simulation that uh, pertains to the uh, narration, storytelling, uh, orality, writing. Now I am trying to talk with you and uh, I am trying with my words to build some kind of world. So I am kind, I, I try to simulate what I have in mind with the words. This is evident also in literature and so on. The second uh, kind of simulation is a representative of, of formal simulation, and it is the most common simulation, maybe the simulation most studied in the fine arts academies, because it pertains to uh, techniques uh, like painting, sculpture, photography, cinema, video 3D, computer image, animation, video games, and so on. The third uh, kind of simulation is uh, uh, called the behavioral simulation. Uh, in this case, I do not simulate the appearance of the world, but the behavior of the world. How, how uh, for, for instance, in robotics, how uh, how uh, animals move or human moves, and so I copy their behavior in, uh, in, uh, in, these, uh, in these tools. Uh, it is possible that uh, these different kinds of simulation go together. For instance, I can create uh, some kind of robot that uh, perfectly mimics, uh, uh, apparently simulates a, a, a human or, or an animal, and that also behaves like, like them. So, uh, these kind of simulation are not to be considered as uh, separated. Uh, some example of what I'm saying, uh, uh, of what I'm saying, uh, mm, this is from painting, this is uh, this beautiful painting. Uh, this is a formal simulation, an evidence formal simulation. You can see how uh, this artist has simulated the, the light that uh, passes through the 
the waves through the, through, through the uh, uh, water waves. Uh, it is a very, a very important study, very huge study. Uh, another example is, uh, is uh, the next one. In this case, uh, we have uh, we, we, we simulate the sea, the, 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 the waves in the sea uh, in, in, the field of, uh, in the field of animation. Uh, so we could say, do we simulate also the behavior of the waves? Yes and no, because if you should uh, simulate the behavior of the, of the waves, we should uh, simulate, uh, and it is uh, 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 of uh, enormous complexity, all the movement of the water particles. And this is, uh, this is totally impossible because it, 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 uh, it is a very complex uh, uh, task. In the case, uh, in the case of uh, uh, the simulation of uh, the behavior, uh, in, in, on the top of the, of the uh, slide you see uh, the uh, behavior of uh, flocks of uh, 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 birds uh, and uh, in nature this is a, a rather common uh, behavior of flocks and sardines on the left. Uh, they they uh, create these uh, enormous uh, flocks of uh, individuals uh, and they move uh, uh, in uh, the same direction but uh, each, uh, every, every individual has a, a, a slightly different uh, path but they never clash and so uh, these uh, uh, scientists have, uh, have uh, taken the algorithm that regulates uh, these, uh, these uh, movements, uh, this, uh, this, is, this is called swarm intelligence, uh, swarm intelligence, and they have applied it uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, movies and to the, the realm of the arts, for instance. Uh, the King Lion is the first example of uh, industrial, because it, it was a very important, uh, a very important movie, uh, of in, uh, application of swarm intelligence, of that, uh, of that uh, algorithm that was taken from nature uh, in the movement of the gnus, of the stampede of the gnus. Th that are thousands of animals, and so you can imagine the difficulty for animators to animate uh, all this uh, mass of, uh, of uh, figures. Uh, well, simulation is very, is very uh, powerful, is a very powerful tool to create models and increase the knowledge of the world. And, uh, uh, but we have to consider that as long, uh, anyway, as long as it may be similar to the object, to the phenomenon, or to the process that it describes, uh, uh, represents or replaces simulation, is always a reduction of the, of the, uh, of the uh, phenomenon, of the process. Because, uh, uh, for instance, when in the, in the course of history, uh, there, there has been models to represent the, the, the universe, the solar system, and so on. Of course, these models are tied to the knowledge that at the time uh, was present. And so, in this way, uh, simulation is solely a reduction of the phenomena that it wants to simulate. But uh, it can introduce, uh, add or remove elements, elements from reality. And so, uh, also for this reason, it can make emerge some interesting relationship, uh, some interesting issues, uh, topics that uh, without uh, would be totally ignored. As to uh, our topic, uh, the um, generative AI, I have uh, created this, uh, this uh, picture um, to state some of the differences that uh, that uh, uh, pertains uh, these fields. Uh, well, uh, artificial uh, intelligence is the field of study related to intelligence systems, so-called intelligence systems that simulate human knowledge. Uh, the, the original, the, the, the early idea is to simulate, uh, simulate uh, the, what are considered the higher uh, abilities of humanity, so the symbolic abilities. 
um, while robotics, uh, on the contrary, so, so uh, artificial intelligence has a, a, a top-down uh, approach, while robotics, on the contrary, has a bottom-up approach, so creates uh, uh, simple elements and then adds uh, uh, complication and intelligence. Uh, machine learning is, uh, are intelligent systems that uh, derive knowledge from patterns in data and uh, robotics is inside this, uh, part of robotics is inside this realm. Deep learning are models uh, whose structure is based on artificial neural networks, uh, a technique that teaches computers to do what comes naturally to humans, for, for instance, uh, learn by example, and uh, in the end, generative AI uh, are models that use neural networks to identify the patterns and structures with, uh, within existing data to generate uh, new and original content that are very, very different uh, text, images, uh, sound, video, music, and, 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 and so on. Uh, among the early examples, uh, among the early examples uh, of, the, of using neural networks, uh, there is uh, these uh, two uh, short films. Uh, and in these short films, uh, uh, the, uh, a bot that uh, has named in itself uh, Benjamin has written, has written the plot, has written the stories. And uh, Oscar Sharp and Ross Gooding, that are humans, uh, have created the, the, the uh, short, uh, short films. And they are uh, some kind of science fiction films. And the, in particular, the first one in 2016 has won some uh, uh, awards uh, um, in, the, in the cinema uh, realm. Um, then uh, um, uh, this uh, picture instead uh, show uh, this short film that maybe you know because it's, it's, very, it's very famous about uh, GANs, uh, Generated Adversarial Networks. Uh, GANs are, uh, have been invented in 2014 uh, the with that famous article by Young Goodfellow. Uh, and uh, in a few years, uh, it uh, has become, uh, uh, they have been used to, to, uh, to, uh, create, uh, to create pictures. Uh, um, in this case, we see uh, we see pictures that have been created from uh, uh, the Cellular Faces uh, uh, database that contains um, just uh, 2,000, more than 2,000 faces images. So the faces that you see are not uh, uh, photographs, but are, uh, come from photographs, but are, are pictures of people that do not exist. And, uh, and this, uh, this uh, way of, uh, of work uh, um, so here uh, they limit, uh, it, it, they are uh, square pictures because they limit the, by them uh, by the time uh, and in s for some application also today is uh, 1024 pixels per 1024 pixels. And these, uh, these uh, mm, so um, it is very <laughs> interesting how this, uh, this um, um, kind of morphing uh, uh, work. In the field of uh, uh, commercial field, uh, these uh, um, GANs have been used uh, here in this advertising in the field of fashion. Again, you see that uh, there are squares. 124 pixels per 124 pixels. Uh, well, um, in the art field, one of the first uh, um, one of the first uh, um, artists to work with uh, Gans is uh, Mike Tika. Uh, with uh, this latent face space uh, journey that uh, it, it, it took. Uh, uh, thousands of pictures from uh, from Flickr and uh, created this uh, this uh, um, today is very is very trivial, but uh, by that time uh, and it is six years ago it was not. Of course, uh, uh, here there is a, a small uh, big problem that uh, maybe he didn't uh, 
ask uh, no permission to the pictures of the people that uh, were uh, in uh, 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 Flickr. Today, let's let, uh, go to today. Well, today, uh, as you know, you can, uh, uh, with uh, Mid Journey, uh, Stable Diffusion, Dolly, and some other, some other uh, programs, uh, AI generated programs, uh, AI generative AI programs, sorry, uh, to create very, very realistic uh, images. Um, and um, as, I, as I said before, I have uh, uh, selected for our students uh, three main uh, uh, three main softwares that are uh, Midjourney, uh, Stable Diffusion, and Dol E. I didn't consider um, other uh, tools like Firefly of Adobe, because uh, both for uh, uh, economical reasons, because Firefly is in beta now and it will it will be put inside the Adobe the Adobe uh, suite. Uh, that uh, is uh, uh, that you have to pay for, and uh, uh, especially Adobe has a very strong uh, pr uh, imprint on the on the um, making picture in the world. So, uh, some kind of uh, of uh, a very a very large uh, a very large uh, consistency, and so I think that it was better to choose uh, applications that have not this. Uh, so great uh, influence, and from the, fr also from uh, uh, a creative point viewpoint, since uh, uh, Firefly takes uh, the pictures uh, um, from uh, is uh, from Adobe's database, from Adobe database. So uh, it is true that you you can have less uh, problems. Uh, uh, with uh, copyright, because uh, all the pictures from the, the database that use Firefly are Adobe, uh, the property of Adobe, but the results are not, uh, in my opinion, so interesting like, uh, for instance, Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, and Dol E. This is a picture uh, made by Midjourney. You can see the prompt, and uh, the prompt is a kind of a poetry that. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, we all uh, teacher uh, uh, write uh, and uh, hide uh, during the night's uh, full moon. And uh, the next one is uh, uh, a picture that uh, could be mistaken for a photograph. And uh, this is made with stable diffusion. And it is uh, a, a picture of one of my favorite, uh, uh, <laughs> not true, actresses that is Emma Watts. Emma Watts. Uh, has been very famous for participating in the um, uh, saga uh, of, uh, of uh, um, magicians and so on. And here too you can see the, the, the uh, prompt. Um, so um, with this uh, picture I want to introduce uh, uh, we want to introduce the, the, the fact that uh, through uh, generative AI you can uh, create uh, pictures that are very similar uh, to, uh, to photographs. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, en passant, if I ask uh, to uh, Stable Diffusion to create pictures of Emma Watson, uh, it creates pictures of Emma Watson. But if I ask uh, Stable Diffusion to create pictures of myself, uh, doesn't work because uh, my presence in the databases that uh, Stable Diffusion uses, uh, I do not, uh, I do not, uh, I do not uh, belong. I do not um, am there. And uh, to introduce the the the, uh, the issue of a photography, maybe you remember this picture that uh, has been has become very famous worldwide, and this picture. Uh, as won the uh, as 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 won the Sony World Photography Awards 2023, and uh, after uh, that uh, it uh, was awarded, uh, the author Boris Elgatsen uh, said that it was not a photograph, but it was made uh, with uh, a generative artificial intelligence. 
and the rights. AI images and photography should not compete with each other in a world like this. They are different entities. AI is not photography. Therefore, I will not accept the award. He refused to accept the award, and he raises this case. We, the photo world, need an open discussion, a discussion about what we want to consider photography and what not. Is the umbrella of photography large enough to invite AI images to enter, or would this be a mistake? Uh, it is a very interesting question because uh, it, uh, it raises also ethical issues. Because since uh, uh, I could uh, create pictures of very famous people that uh, are, uh, are making uh, acts uh, or are saying if they are videos, uh, they are involved in situations that are very, are very harmful, can be very harmful, can be very perilous. Um, I could say that uh, um, it, it, it is not, I think that it is not a mistake of Sony. I, I, I tend to think that Sony awarded this picture trying to demonstrate uh, a wider vision and including in photography also AI. Because uh, here there is, uh, there is, if you see this uh, hand, it's uh, very poorly made. And it, this is typical of, uh, of uh, AI, uh, of early AI, uh, generative AI application. But Sony would uh, have uh, not uh, awarded, confused this with photography, taking in consideration this uh, distinction that I uh, made many years ago and that in some of my courses I, I, I propose that uh, substantially divides uh, all the kinds of images. Uh, from one side, what uh, the, uh, and the referential images, and uh, from the other side, the non-referential images. Referential, it comes from Latin, at, from res ferens, it is Latin, and means uh, uh, that brings the scene, because uh, in front of a photography, of a clear photography, uh, I can never deny that what is represented has been in front of the objective. So, uh, I ask to my students when I, I propose this distinction, uh, let's take, for example, uh, the photography. What is uh, really necessary, unavoidable, to get uh, a photography? And so they can say, they say, the objective, they say the light, they say the camera, but not. What is uh, uh, absolutely fundamental to get a photographic picture is the presence of uh, uh, some, something that reflects or produces light in front of the camera. Without uh, something that, uh, without anything that uh, uh, produces or reflects light in front of the camera, I have no photography. And also in examples like, for instance, uh, uh, in Man Ray, Man Ray, and with his uh, radiograms, uh, he put directly the, the, the uh, sheet, the photosynthetic sheet in front of the object, but the object was there. So for these reasons, we cannot uh, talk. A photography cannot be, cannot be, uh, has, a, has a very important role inside the arts, but uh, there are not abstract photographies. Because anyway, also the photographies that uh, uh, seems to, to uh, 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 formally appear as abstract uh, uh, have anyway uh, recorded the light that was produced and uh, or reflected by something that is in front of them. And so in this category, so I have written uh, the referential images required during the creation of the image, the physical presence of the subject or object. The object to be represented must physically exist and be present at the moment of the creation of the image, while non-referential images do not have this constraint. 
and can also represent what does not physically exist or is not present in the moment of representation. So in the category of referential images, we found molds and similar, for instance, imprints and sample. Of course, uh, this, is, uh, this is the presence of the, of the object uh, uh, and uh, its uh, presence on the final picture does not depend on light but uh, on ink. Uh, and uh, in the field of, uh, of uh, light, uh, photography, cinema, but cinema with uh, uh, movie camera, video with video camera, and holography, 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 but not holography is not uh, what uh, is uh, mistaken by holography, uh, but uh, uh, real holography. So uh, uh, whole, uh, 3D uh, pictures, real 3D pictures that are made uh, through a laser uh, recording process. From the other side, no referential uh, images, there are paintings, sculpture, drawings, graphics, animation, cinema, computer generated images, you can see that cinema pertains uh, uh, both categories because we can make films, movies, uh, both uh, with a movie camera, um, capturing the light of the real world, but we can also make films, movies, uh, through animation and through uh, 3D animation or animation of any type. And so it's for video, video games, metaverses and AI generated images. There are applica in cinema, for instance, there are examples of uh, a, 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 a coexistence of these two, of referential and referential images. For instance, uh, in the, in the uh, what can be a movie that uh, all uh, our students uh, all have uh, seen, so, um, Jurassic Park, maybe you know Jur Jurassic Park with the di dinosaurs. Well, dinosaurs were made with the computer, so are no referential images, but actors uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, objects uh, were, uh, were taken from, from, from reality. So in cinema, um, often there is uh, this uh, mixing of uh, referential and non-referential picture. And, uh, so we could say, uh, e, uh, today, is it possible to envisage uh, a, a direction in the, in the future of the images? And this will require, I think, uh, uh, another, another <laughs> much more lessons than, than what uh, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, uh, presenting now, since, uh, uh, yes, the future is there. From the, in the, in the non-referential images. And uh, for, for many reasons that are economical reasons, that are uh, reason of, of uh, uh, facility to, to, to uh, easiness to create uh, pictures. And so the world is going in this direction. So we could say that uh, what is lost uh, in this process? Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe it is a, 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 some considerations that I do not want to put together as the other lessons where we will be resuming more about that. But uh, uh, in front, uh, in, in all our documents, uh, we have a picture of ourselves in the passport, in the identity card. This picture is a proof of who we are because are referential images. In front of the referential images, I can never deny that what is represented has been in front of the objective. Uh, but uh, uh, non-referential images uh, cannot prove this uh, connection between the person, between the, the identity of the person and, and, the, and the image. And uh, we are already assisting to this shift process for instance, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in photography, from analog photography to digital photography and to algorithmic photography, uh, digital photography, digital photography, already uh, there are algorithms that intervene on the image. For instance, when I take a picture with uh, uh, this or a, or a, or a, a, a camera of a with a digital camera, uh, there are algorithms that uh, transform the light that hits uh, the sensor to the final file, to the final picture. And uh, the, 
the, the companies that build the sensor uh, are just a few in the world. But the pictures that we see in many different cameras and devices like this uh, are very different, can be very different, because each company has its own algorithms that put, but uh, in, 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 in doing so, they intervene on the reality of the image. And more in the algorithmic pho photography, you know that uh, with uh, sophisticated uh, um, devices like this, you can take a picture of a, a portrait of a person and cancel uh, the, the, the background or, uh, um, or uh, blur the background. And so you intervene on the, on the, on the uh, reality of this picture because you modify that, that uh, uh, characteristic that is a referentiality of the image. So uh, in, in this way, the, in, in, in photography, this, uh, uh, the referential char characteristic of the uh, photographic images are uh, becoming fable and fable. And uh, uh, of course, uh, today you have uh, many ways to, to intervene on uh, um, in, on, on, on the picture taken from uh, cameras or smartphone with uh, uh, algorithms uh, in many softwares that are free to use. And of course, here there is a trace of referentiality because uh, each, picture, picture, or each of these pictures has been taken from reality, but uh, you have modified it uh, with a software. And this, uh, is, uh, this uh, confusion is even more evident uh, in this case. Uh, maybe you remember in 2019 uh, the, this picture of the black hole. And, uh, the pi and many, many, uh, many uh, newspapers, many magazines, many journalists said it is the first photo of a black hole. But it is not a photo. Technically, this is not a photo, because uh, uh, what uh, was uh, recorded are the radio data of uh, that were anyway uh, um, saying that it is a, a picture of a black hole is uh, a consistent mistake, because uh, as you know, the uh, the black hole attracts all the light, so it cannot it cannot uh, make uh, a light exit. In this case, uh, the pictures have been taken by the radio frequencies that uh, have been recorded and transformed into, into images, colorized, and then uh, put together by, uh, by uh, two supercomputers. And this is uh, the way they made this, uh, this picture. And uh, more recently, they reworked on the, in, the, in 2023, just this year, and to obtain a, a, a picture uh, that should be more representative. But you see that uh, I have uh, reported here some, uh, some uh, journal uh, have uh, written the titles, uh, first photo of the black hole, first photo of the Milky Way. Of course, here there, is, there still exists something that is referential because something exists that has uh, emitted radio frequencies. So uh, the reference, the idea of reference is still present, is still present here. But of course, it, uh, it has been uh, filtered, uh, refurbished. And uh, one, more, one, more, one more example is uh, this one. Um, Maybe you remember what is considered the first movie. Um, the Brother Lumiere, the arrival of the, of the train in the station, uh, and uh, it is considered the first referential movie because uh, the moving images existed, uh, have been existing for a very long time. Um, and um, Denis Shirayev has taken this movie and uh, applied uh, a, an artificial intelligence uh, application and upscaled it to 
four key resolutions, uh, 60 uh, uh, um, uh, photograms per second. So, and somebody talk about uh, some kind of restoration of the movie. But it is not a restoration. Because in, in, in this picture we add information that is not in the, in the, in the, in the, in the original movie. So, again, we are confusing. Uh, about photography, what uh, is photography and what is not. So this can, can be considered as an artistic intervention on the original movie. Apart from this, uh, I was moved by uh, seeing uh, that uh, people that uh, seem uh, uh, almost existent. And, I see, and uh, what uh, uh, I have always been uh, um, I, I have loved photography because photography, in some way, um, allows to uh, make a live pe uh, person, people, situations that are no more in that way. And so, seeing all these people that were there, I cannot deny that the people that were represented were there during the, this uh, short shooting. They were living, they were present. And this uh, uh, certainty, uh, no, uh, no uh, painting, no sculpture can give me the certainty. Um, so, um, so, talking about about uh, the uh, the possibilities that uh, generative uh, artificial intelligence can give today to us, we could do some kind of uh, parallel. A historical parallel with, with photography. Uh, photography uh, raises in the first uh, two uh, decades of the 19th century, and uh, photography for the first time allowed people that were unable to draw, unable to, 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 to draw to create pictures. And uh, uh, it was a very, a very it, it, it was it, it was not a plain history because uh, because uh, photography menaced the the picture the, the paintings uh, right to 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 represent the world and uh, there were many intellectuals uh, that were against photography and I remember for instance the four letters uh, that uh, Charles Baudelaire wrote to the Revue Française stating that. Uh, uh, Photography had to remain a servant of uh, paintings. Uh, and he, he, he states a, a sentence that I cannot, could not uh, forget, that is, uh, if uh, to photography it will be allowed to develop, it will make disappear paintings thanks to his natural alliance to multitudes the multitudes. And in this kind of uh, sentence and this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, idea of the future, there is something that is uh, uh, wrong and something that is uh, right. The wrong part is that uh, photography did not make paintings disappear. And today we have in the Finance Academy uh, students that uh, paint. But from the other side, uh, um, Boulder was uh, right when he stated, uh, sent to its natural alliance for, uh, for with the multitude, because he had understood that uh, photography is a mass media. And today we have uh, millions, literally millions of pictures that are every day put into social network and so on. So in some way, as I, as I said, uh, 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 generative artificial intelligence makes, uh, uh, puts this process of, uh, we can say, allowing to all the people to create a picture also in the field of non-referentiality. While photography allows all the people to create pictures, but referential pictures, uh, a, a sentence of a famous uh, um, Scholar in aesthetic, 
the Italian stolen estate, Gillo Dorfles, with photography, image, and manual talent are definitely separated because it is not necessary to, to draw, um, to make a picture, a photographic picture. Uh, so, uh, we also with AI, it is possible to create images without being able to draw. But unlike photography, these are non-referential ones. So AI has further chance of expression. Today it is possible to create referential and non-referential images without being able to draw. And uh, generative AI creates images through text, the prompt. They are based on the symbolic dimension of language with words that are transduced into images. And this is a very interesting topic that uh, would work a course uh, ap apart, the, the relation between uh, words within language and, and images. So uh, one of the um, things that I find particularly interesting in uh, AI-generated images is, uh, th uh, are the errors like this, the error like this. Uh, I, I don't know why. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is something that I, that I like, that I love. Uh, because uh, in some way I try as, as, uh, as uh, every human to humanize the, 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 this kind of mechanism, this algorithm. Uh, and uh, so I try to understand why uh, there are these errors, these mistakes. Uh, and so I have made some, for instance, in the, in the, in the uh, picture that you see here, it seems that uh, um, there, is, uh, there are a lot of, uh, of legs that, uh, a lot of legs and a lot of, uh, of hands that do not pertain, do, do, do not uh, are from the dancers. And uh, what I uh, try to understand is why they, made these errors. Uh, we could answer because we had not enough uh, pictures of uh, dancers. And this is uh, the most common and, uh, and, uh, and clear answer. Uh, then I have asked uh, to uh, stable diffusion to create, uh, create uh, uh, post-human uh, images in the way, in this case, of uh, Caravaggio. Caravaggio. And he created this, this, uh, this st very strange, uh, very strange, uh, very strange image uh, with this uh, uh, interpenetration of bodies. And, uh, and uh, um, that is something that uh, recalls uh, the, the artist. And, uh, but uh, but uh, it is totally, totally, totally melted, totally, uh, totally wrong. And I have tried the same with... Uh, Michelangelo, uh, um, uh, Michelangelo um, depicting posthuman. Oh, and uh, and uh, also and also Botticelli, Botticelli and the posthuman. How Botticelli would have a picture represented represented uh, uh, posthuman. Uh, and it allows also to understand on which kind of uh, of. Uh, data they were trained and uh, data uh, that are that pertains the history of art are very few uh, so the, the pictures that were made uh, when you ask uh, to this uh, this uh, AI generative uh, software about uh, art history are very are very fable uh, so most probably the they, they are not trained in in, in a large database uh, of art history. And one thing that I that I say that I often say is uh, is uh, uh, they almost like many people are almost like almost like, and uh, a, a case is uh, this one almost like because here here we we can say. Yes, we are in an, into an environment that is very complicated. We can see something vegetables, but uh, it is not clear if it's an interior environment or, or an exterior environment. 
and more and more, there are a lot of objects, but none of these objects is uh, realistic, is, is what that we recognize. And this is uh, a very interesting behavior uh, of uh, generative AI. They almost like, almost like. And uh, this, uh, mm, this uh, uh, feature of the almost like is very interesting to better understand, for instance, the surrealism or some artistic, uh, artistic movement. Uh, then I have tried some other experiment, uh, for instance, this one. In this one, uh, I was discussing with a friend of mine in chat uh, the uh, nomination, the new, the new nomination to the uh, board of, uh, to the administration, to the, to the direction of the uh, the EKM, the Centrum for Art and Media in Kazru, it is one of the, the most important uh, centers in the world about multimedia. And uh, it has been uh, directed for many years uh, by Peter Weibel. Peter Weibel is a great uh, artist and theo uh, theorist about, uh, about uh, all the world that uh, we are uh, working now. And uh, I publish uh, an essay of him uh, inside my first book. And uh, he also, and, and this is uh, a thing that uh, just a few people know, he has also been uh, the director of the Austrian Pavilion in the Venice Biennale for many years. And the new person, the new person, uh, we were discussing about the new person in Italian, of course. But uh, uh, by the time I was uh, in, in mid-journey, I was trying to create images in mid-journey, so I took the text uh, in Italian uh, of the discussion with my friend, and I put inside mid-journey, and these are the results. And uh, I could not understand how, why he created this picture, which kind uh, he took, and, and what, are, what is the, the connection among the text and the final picture. The picture um, recalls in some way some illustrations of the 60s and, 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 uh, and, and 70s. But uh, uh, how this artificial intelligence has worked? What has kept from my text to generate this, this picture, this image? And again, we are in the problem that uh, uh, delineated before the, of the relationship uh, between text and picture and image. Um, one, more, one more example is uh, this one. As many of our students, uh, when I was a student, I uh, have been part uh, in uh, musical bands. And so, um, I wrote this song. I, I, I had not enough talent to devote to music in my, my, my life, but I wrote this song. And I, uh, I put uh, that uh, as a prompt inside my journey. And this is uh, the, the result. In, in, in this way, in this case, I think that uh, there is, uh, it is in French, not in English, but there is something that uh, it could be the cover of the possible of the possible record, of the possible long playing. I will never do it, of course. To end my, my, my presentation, I will uh, uh, consider uh, the uh, copyright uh, issues, the copyright issues. And uh, in uh, 2019, uh, um, Stephen, Stephen Taylor in the United States uh, created this picture, it is not a great picture, but the, the, the capabilities of uh, AI generative software by that date were not uh, the ones of today, and asked it to the Copyright Office Review Board, re Review Office of the United States to have uh, copyrighted this, uh, this image. And uh, the, his, uh, his uh, uh, request was rejected, and was rejected two times why it was rejected. Uh, here we have uh, the, the, the reasons and the, the sentence, uh, the two sentences, 
the first one in 2022 and the uh, more recent in 2023. And I have put in red what uh, the United States Copyright Office answered to uh, its request. But copyright law only protects the fruits of intellectual labor that are founded in the creative powers of the human mind. The office will not register works produced by a machine or mere mechanical process that operates without any creative input or intervention from a human author. Because under the statute, a work must be created by a human being. It was a, can be raised a, a great discussion about this sentence. This but also the cycle reiterates the first one. When AI technology receives solely a prompt from a human and produces complex written, visual, or musical works in response, the traditional elements of authorship, the traditional element of authorship are determined and executed by the technology, not the human user. So, uh, it is not possible in the United States at least to have copyrighted uh, AI generated uh, pictures. But it is possible to win artistic contest like uh, with this picture that has won the Colorado State Fair Digital Competition, the first prize. So it is some, in some kind, uh, kind of contradiction and uh, we are uh, just uh, working on the uh, on some kind of a history that is, is growing, is coming. So we have to uh, 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 generate new rules. We have to be able to distinguish uh, the photographies by, from uh, AI generated pictures. And we have also to regulate uh, all these topics. Well, uh, my presentation uh, ends uh, in this way. I hope that uh, you are not uh, falling asleep. And uh, uh, so uh, the, second, the second lesson will be, I think, uh, in October. On uh, October 13. And uh, we will go more in deep in this topic, and in particular on uh, AI, generative AI, art form, and all what about art has happened before. Thank you.